This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Forensic psychologist Kate Walinga is with us right now as we continue to dissect the case against the alleged Long Island serial killer Rex Hewerman. The big question that's asked quite often, I've heard a great advocate for this, Carrie Rawson, who is a daughter of BTK, always speaking up on behalf of families who are the victims of someone like this who had a loved one, a father, a, a brother, whatever it may be, who commits these sort of crimes and talks about how, yeah, you really don't necessarily realize what's going on while it's going on. After the fact, hindsight, maybe you can see a couple things here and there, but it's never, it's about clear as mud while you're living in it. When you look at this family, and I'm asking to do a little uh, bit of guesswork here or a little bit of making some assumptions when we're looking at this family what we have seen about them do, does it strike you that this family was likely also victims of abuse beat down i'm not even necessarily saying physically maybe but but mentally over the years to maybe not even question anything that rex was up to i personally get that vibe just by looking at them like these are broken people who don't even realize the situation that they were in and i feel horrible for them I feel horrible for them. I, there's a difference between abuse and family culture. Okay. And I don't know where on that spectrum it falls. So all I can offer as a parallel from my own family is that you don't talk about problems. Generational trauma is a thing. Yeah. And so I've learned things about my parents and my grandparents years and decades after it happened that were pretty serious events that they went through. And I've asked, like, why didn't you ever talk about this? I understand that not everybody presses charges for things, but like, why didn't I know? Yeah. My, for instance, my maternal grandparents had a wildly toxic and abusive relationship between themselves. I didn't, I only ever saw them on vacations and visits and fun times. And I had no idea how bad things were. And until after my grandfather died, and then my grandmother started talking about it. And I asked her, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, sure. Yeah, everything. <laughs> and, yes. And there, there's a case where for her, between her and him, that was a Abuse, I would argue. But like for me, I wasn't abused by them or threatened by them. It was simply the family culture that you don't ask sure. and you don't talk about it. And if grandpa seems really angry, then she's going to load us up in the car and go do something. And it never really occurred to me. And watching how quickly his wife filed for divorce, Rex's wife, and watching how like you said, beat down they are. Yeah. My suspicion is that at the very least, best case scenario, here's a family who had that culture of you don't ask things and then you look back at it and go, oh, it was all right there. Right there in, in plain sight, but hard to know. And speaking of family culture, when that's in place and there's a certain culture, you don't realize that maybe your family culture is toxic or maybe some of the choices in that culture are not so great because that's what you're immersed in. And unless you're outside of that culture and take some time, grow up, things of that nature, it, it takes those events to really get some insight into what's been, quote unquote, no, normal for so long. Exactly. Look, I, my, my mother qualifies as clinically narcissistic <laughs> and I didn't sever ties or go in contact with her until I was 40. Yeah. Because that was normal. That was sure. just her being her and that, that felt normal. And for the, a very long time, the vibe was, we can mistreat Kate. That's fine. Kate can take it. And I did as long as there was no, like the mindset I had was, but she's good to my kids. Yeah. So I'll just take it. And it wasn't until I discovered that, no, she's not being good to the kids either. And in fact, it's getting worse that that's what spurred me to change things. So there are times just in normal family life where we think, oh, that's just Joe being Joe. That's yeah. Raymond being Raymond. And we let it happen. And it's incremental that if this person behaved this way on a first date, 
there wouldn't be a second date. But when they behave early on and then it's these steady little changes and you feel gaslit and you self-doubt and you end up with these horrible outcomes. Very well said. When we look at the case overall, do you feel there was any sort of systematic failure or failure in some way, shape, or form that allowed these murders to go unsolved for so long and for, if it is Rex, to continue living life as normal, even though there was certain social red flags that people have talked about with Rex and what you were saying with the family dynamics. Was there anything that one could have looked into a little bit further to to maybe figure out what was going on with this case? Or was it put to the side because of the nature of it being these are barb hookers? I think the sex work aspect definitely plays a role. I also, there are at least 10 bodies that have found, been found within the area of Gilgo Beach. And I, I don't know right now that, I don't believe that Rex is guilty for all of them. I also suspect that we're going to find other victims in other states based on his own travel and his own tendencies and Israel Key's approach to things. And a successful and I'm using visual quotes here, a successful serial offender knows to change things up and knows to fly under the radar and knows to choose victims that people aren't going to look for or care about as much. And the fact that the families of these victims did look and did care and did make a lot of noise definitely helped. But some of the... I think people don't realize how long DNA can take, especially five to 10 years ago. Sure. To get DNA results back. So people have talked about like where they've been for the past 12 years. They've known this guy. They've known what he looked like. They've known what car he drove. All true. But DNA, the science is improving steadily and faster. But 10 or 12 years ago, if you got... DNA results in under a year, you were doing pretty well. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi.